Hello everyone, welcome back to 104's Unplugged channel. So uh, yeah, once again, I'm out. Familiar location, thought I'd get one more in before Easter at the lovely Forest Fields campsite. So you can just about make out uh, Camp Berlingo down there. I worked out there, it's actually 16 years old, that car. Couldn't believe it. It seems like yesterday, the family bought the thing. Anyway, I've got some uh, neighbours now. It's starting to fill up a bit now. It seems very spring-like. I've actually just arrived today. I'm very pleased that I've got my uh, setup time down to uh, less than an hour. Quite windy down there, so I didn't put the gazebo up, but um, I can if I so wish. I'm here for uh, five days, stroke four nights. And rather than waste this uh, relatively nice uh, day, and uh, it's 20 past five now in the evening. Should stay light till about uh, half past six, seven o'clock. So I thought, why waste it? Let's uh, get up on the hills and uh, do some walking. So that's exactly what I'm doing. So uh, there we are. I think I'll just go up to the little lookout uh, post tonight. I've got a bit of gout about me, so I've just taken a couple of uh, anti-inflammatory tablets. So uh, there we are, it's all good fun. Uh, I think there seems to be some sort of drone up in the air up there. I'm not too sure. It seems to be hovering like a drone, so I think maybe, uh, I don't know, some survey work or something going on. I don't know. I don't know. Perhaps, uh, I don't know. I won't go into it. But uh, there we are. I should go up and intercept them if need be. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm sure it's nothing sinister. Anyway, so uh, yeah, I'm going to head up to that little uh, lookout post up there and head back down for uh, some grub. Now, I'm taking it easy with the grub this week. I'm going to do one slow cook. And uh, I've actually got a couple of microwave meals because I'm here to walk. I really am here to walk. Uh, I want to get under 14 stone and um, down to about 13 and a half stone, which is about 85 kilos. So I've gone from 100 now down to uh, about 91. So I've lost 9 kilos, stroke 10 kilos. And um, I want to get down that a little bit further. So uh, there we are. I'm going to hit these lovely hills. And uh, get back for some nose bag. So, uh, changes to the station, station so much as uh, base camp, is um, I'm trying to uh, sort of move away now from mains power. I have bought the electric hookup for this one, but uh, I have got a couple of extra power banks, and I do have, I've got it with me this time, but uh, when the nights uh, really start um, getting shorter and the days get longer, I will uh, deploy a 100 watt solar panel. So, uh, there we go. <sighs> right, as you can see, I've made it to the lookout point. My little bit of faked footage there. I've actually had to walk up there and come back again. You know how it goes when you see these YouTubers, if they're working on their own. That's the type of fake crap we've got to do to make things look realistic. Anyway, um, yeah, lovely little spot this is. It's sort of like, a, I, I think, more of a little storm shelter, because anyway, the weather can get pretty uh, pretty wicked up here at times, but I love that sort of thing within reason. So, uh, yeah, i um, feeling a little bit underwhelmed. I haven't really uh, pushed myself too much, so I may continue that way, that way, and uh, weave my way to the top before... Uh, I call it a day, but uh, if you look behind me, oh, that way somewhere, you'll see how uh, the hillside drops off dramatically. Something blown in the eye there. But uh, yeah, that's where I love walking around that, at the top of that. It's a little bit, whoa, feels a lot more steep than it looks from here when you're up there. Fantastic views, absolutely wonderful. And it's a great walk right around the back of the sort of plateau, up over those burial mounds and, uh, back round here again absolutely great so uh yeah um talk of burial mounds i've got a bit of unfinished business up there this week i reckon now when i was up here last time obviously it's getting dark it's not dark yet it's six o'clock it's getting dark by about 5 30 and um it was the hunter's moon full almost completely full moon i think the very full moon was the next night really bright moon and i've been up around the uh the trig point up there and the burial mounds and that uh, was probably about, I don't know, 50 metres away. And I look over, and it's quite a nice sunset. The visibility was really good. And the hunter's moon was starting to come up as well. It was getting dusk. 
and um, I, I'm sure I could see somebody sort of behind the trig point. I thought there's somebody behind that bloody trig point. Hey ho. Anyway, as I was sort of looking at it, the trig point almost seemed to be quite rubbery, quite fluid. It's almost like it, a trig point is a lump of concrete, basically. It's like, whoa, whoa. I thought, what, what the hell is that? So I thought, I don't, I don't fancy finding out. So um, I did get a bit of a wriggle on and get off the top because I didn't really want to be chased off the top of the hill by uh, some sort of rubbery trig point that had come alive under the hunter's moon. <laughs> but having said that, I've always wanted to sort of um, want to face things down. Fears, whatever, um, bullies, anything like that. I like to sort of face them down. And um, I sort of fancy heading up there on a night time and saying, OK, you've got something to say, show yourself. So uh, we'll see if that actually materialises. Uh, probably the wrong choice of word, materialise. As in a, perhaps an ancestor is going to materialise up there. I don't know. But let's see if that actually happens this week. And I'm brave enough to go up there and face the ancestors of the trig point. Okay, if you can make it out, there's those three burial mounds. Obviously very influential and important people back in their uh, time. Heavens knows, but maybe thousands of years. We've even got a bit of a moon up there as well going on. So something of a replication of my encounter, the rubber trig point. But uh, I'm not going up there tonight. I'm just going to head over there and drop down back to camp. But uh, like I said, I'm coming up here, I reckon, to face that uh, fear of the rubber trig point. of something going on that night, something a bit, uh, I don't know. But uh, I intend to go up there and ask them politely if they would like to uh, communicate, make themselves known or whatever. Obviously, uh, what language they would have used would be uh, probably incomprehensible to us now. But uh, it would be interesting to know or listen to the words of their time just to see if any of those words have made it through to modern English. It's not going to be old English. Old English is uh, incomprehensible. Middle English is not far off. But um, that would be some sort of ancient, uh, maybe even colloquial sort of uh, language of their own. So who knows? I think we're even predated Celtic. We're getting a little bit dark now, a few drops of rain. That doesn't really matter. Battery's almost flat. So uh, I'm going to call it a day from up here, as far as uh, any sort of video is concerned. And I'm going to potter my way back down to Camp Berlingo and uh, hit these uh, microwave mills. Like, uh, I don't know, you can't believe, because I am a little bit peckish. It's been a long time since I had uh, any lunch. That was back home, about 11 o'clock this morning. Okay, I'm back up on the hills again. So, uh, yeah, good news and bad news to report. Good news is that uh, that, that microwave meal was edible last night. Not too bad, actually. So that made for an easy evening. And uh, bad news is I woke up in the night and that bloody pain in my foot has come on again. I don't know if it is gout or some sort of rheumatism, rheumatoid arthritis or some bloody thing or not. I don't know. So uh, <sighs> that hurts. But uh, I'm walking against the pain. So, uh, well, what's the worst that could happen? Well, I can make it worse, I suppose. But uh, hopefully I'm able to walk it off. I walked off a pretty bad back problem a couple of weeks ago down at Highlands End. Let's hope I can do the same with this. But if it is gout, normally that type of thing doesn't work. But um, I'm going to give it a go. No pain, no gain. I'm here to walk. So... Uh, uh, grin and bear it really so uh, I think I'm gonna cross the path here and I'm not gonna muck about I'm just gonna go up that really steep thing sod the pain I'm just gonna go for it and that will take me right around the edge of that uh, sort of well, it's not a cliff hillside it's not steep enough to be a cliff but uh, or I might go up there but I've been out there loads of times so I might not uh, do that one again today and then it's back down for another microwave meal, shepherd's pie tonight. So uh, another easy one. I've got some new people moved in next to me. The other couple moved away. Um, yeah, it seemed right. So uh, yeah, just filling up though. And it does feel very spring-like at the moment. Temperatures were um, in double figures 
It was one of the mistakes I made actually. It may have been something that contributed towards the flare up. I only used my um, summer sleeping bag last night. I intended to use the summer sleeping bag with the electric throw over it, but um, I forgot to plug in the electric lead. And to do that, I've got to get out of the vehicle, around the other side. And it's getting around about midnight, and I was sort of conscious that I might start waking people up. So I thought I'd be all right, double figures. But I was actually pretty cold in the night. So uh, maybe that had something to do with that. Then I was tossing and turning. Maybe I twisted the foot a little bit as I was tossing. I don't particularly like sleeping bags. I'll explain why in particular. But I do find them rather restricting and rather claustrophobic. And this particular one is not one of these sort of wide-fitting ones. It's just a little cheap summer one. So uh, I'll think twice about deploying that again this evening. Anyway, let's crack on. Righto, I have um, come up uh, a bit of a chicken route, to be honest. I didn't uh, fancy that really steep one today. I really didn't. Anyway, I shall make up for that with the length of walk. I'm still going to go for it. I don't feel great, but uh, there's the three burial mounds there that I keep talking about. And the one on the right-hand side, as you look at it from here, has got the trig point. Uh, I don't know, um, it might be therapeutic, but what I'm going to try and do is find a, a fast-flowing stream and stick my foot in it. I think um, the cold, flowing, natural water may uh, reduce the inflammation and maybe uh, speed up a recovery from this uh, foot pain. Now there's loads of these little ponds and stuff around. I'm not going to go sticking my foot in something like that. It's going to be a fast flowing little stream. Uh, some of these ponds are actually quite old. There's some that uh, actually appear on the 1840, I think it is, uh, mapping of the area, which uh, I always just thought it was something the farmer dug out at some point just for the sheep. But uh, they are actually named ponds, not something like that. But there's some fairly big ones up over the way there so uh, yeah interesting stuff anyway i'll chat more about that quite an interesting subject for me that so uh, i'm going to uh, carry on well i wouldn't say uh, at any sort of speed which is disappointing because i came up here to uh, sort of get the paces per minute up this time but that's not going to happen today certainly but i'm going to plod up there let's get up to that trick point and uh, let's see if i can find somewhere to uh, blast my foot with the ice cold water from the uh, hills and mountains of mid wells water's taking a turn for the worse i say worse drop of rain never hurt anybody did it It amazes me that uh, my daughter CTX stuff for the radio. Summer months, I don't really go out much in the summer months, and I saw too crowded. But back in the day, if it was raining, it'd knock the amount of people down by about eighty-five percent. Perfect. Okay, rain has stopped, and I'm almost at the trick point. There's the three mounds there, very carefully positioned. By the ancestors so they all looked uh, in line and they look in line from various different directions as well they're very well positioned god knows it must be uh, could be thousands of years ago they were uh, put in there or built some horses wild horses over there i guess they're wild they certainly roam the land with freedom and uh, there we go so uh yeah a bit of a plod I can't say uh, I really enjoyed the walk in a fair bit of pain, but it seems to have uh, alleviated a little bit as I've been walking. But there we are. I'm going to go up to that tree point now. It's a bit early to try and raise the ancestor from within, but uh, <laughs> we'll see what we can do. But um, other than that, I'm going to see if I can find a little stream or something and uh, stick my foot in it to see if uh, the therapeutic uh, nature of the... Uh, water up here will help fix my foot and perhaps if i ask the ancestors nicely they may uh cast some power upon my recovery okay let's uh get on up there okay i've made it up here to the trick point there it is very calm up here today actually 
the rain passed over my head and it's now heading away. So that's Corn D in Penavan there over in the Brecon Beacons or Bano something as it's uh, also known as these days. I got no real strong feelings about the name change to be honest but uh, I think it would have been apt to have uh, had a referendum of the Welsh people to uh, ask them if they uh, wanted to change the name but hey ho so there we are I'd love to get over to those hills at some point too but uh, certainly not with uh, a buggered up foot this time so I've walked quite a lot of that pain off let's hope that stays off Anyway, um, I passed by a few of these sort of uh, pools. Some of them are just uh, puddles. But there's some, that one over there, for example, on the horizon there. As you, uh, not on the horizon, but closer than that, before the hill drops away the other side. That, uh, I think, has got a name. Probably if you translate it, it's just going to be uh, Die the Farmer's Pond or something like that. But they were actually shown as, as named pools on the uh, Ordnance Survey. It was Ordnance Survey in those days back in the mapping of I think 1840s to 1860s. Now that's what I was going to say actually. Um, if you look on online, a lot of local councils have got sort of now and then mapping. And also I think it's the Library of Scotland or the University of Scotland has got a load of mapping for the whole of the UK. And you can have like a side by side. You can pick a base map and then you can pick another map to go with it. And you can compare the two side by side. And uh, I have to say, whoever did the mapping way back did an absolutely phenomenal job. Now, I believe that the maps that I'm looking at, that I'm commenting about now, actually predate the sort of uh, trigonometry, the trig point uh, project. I think it was around about 1935. I may be mistaken, I'm just recalling this uh, off the top of my head. But before that, it's very much um, mapping done through uh, benchmarking. And uh, quite a lot of buildings. They have like a, a line and an arrow underneath and that would be the benchmark and I guess they must have just sort of worked out everything with uh, pieces of string and, and spirit levels. Obviously this was done with trigonometry, triangulation, but uh, wow when you compare the really old maps with the latest satellite they were really really close and you imagine what it would have been. Even places like this, all of it, all got mapped. Imagine a place like this, a couple of guys would have um, rolled up on a horse and cart, checked into the local inn, come up and measured everything that the eye can see, go back to the inn, write up their notes, have a few uh, jars of ale, and then on to the next area. I guess that's how it used to work. I don't know. Perhaps they had teams of people. I don't know. But what I do know is what a phenomenal effort they must have put in to map this uh, country which, uh, with such uh, incredible accuracy, even back in sort of 1840 or something like that. So yeah, go online and um, it's fantastic what you can find, what's uh, here now that wasn't there then and vice versa. A lot of these paths you can see, they're not modern sort of tractor paths. These are ancient uh, town, county, borough boundaries, uh, drovers, tracks, all sorts of things. Absolutely wonderful. And everywhere you look is very much the same because uh, obviously this country is quite an old one and um, it's been populated for quite a long time. And uh, it does list these as uh, burial mounds and things like that. Absolutely super bit of mapping and you can choose all different uh, scales of map and all that type of thing So have a look. I think it was an absolutely excellent effort and uh, well worth looking back and see for example here It was too muddy last time I came here But uh, there is an abandoned farm down over there somewhere and on the modern map you can still see the track that would have led to it and I wanted to get down there to see if I could see any evidence of the walls and things. Absolutely wonderful. And that uh, grey stone over there, that's uh, what I can see of it, actually listed on the 1840 to 1860 map as a benchmark. I can't see a benchmark on it, but I do suspect actually that, that stone used to be upright. I'm not, I, can't, I can't be certain about that. Perhaps um, there was never a sign put on it. But so I do wonder if there's a benchmark uh, mark 
on the side that's stuck in the ground now. Anyway, I like to sort of ponder about things like that. Never bored, never bored. Anyway, it's time to vacate this uh, trig point now. And uh, six o'clock, I'm due to take some more uh, anti-inflammatory tablets. So let's see if I can find somewhere now with a bit of uh, fast flowing water that I can uh, perhaps uh, see if I can uh, take advantage of the therapeutic nature of natural hill water of Midwells. There's a fair size uh, pool here. That definitely would have been uh, on the old uh, mapping. I imagine it's pretty deep in the middle actually. Yeah, it's a fair size on that. As they come up here in the winter, all this is frozen. And the clarity and everything is absolutely lovely. I've seen some lovely sights up here over the last few months, all sorts of different weathers. Just great. So uh, yeah, well worth walking through the pain today. I don't know how many more times I'll check in now because uh, it'll be getting dark soon. It's nearly six p.m. So uh, I'll see how it goes, and then I'm gonna head back, and get some grub, get settled in for the night down at uh, Camp Berlingo. Right, I'm not gonna go searching everywhere for fast flowing water. This'll have to do. It's coming out of that big pond up there. Oh, I'm going to stick my foot in that, see if I can get some uh, information down. But uh, see how it goes. See how it goes. So my gantish foot is in the stream. Well, I lose this possible sense of the word, but uh, it's bloody cold. I know that. I'm going to leave my foot in there as long as I can. Throw it off with my uh, little uh, tea towel there afterwards and toddle off back to uh, base camp Berlingo. I reckon that'll do some good because um, there's a lot to be said. Sportsmen do it a lot. The hot and cold treatment for uh, injuries and things. You go from hot to cold, hot to cold. So I've been walking on that foot now for uh, probably about an hour and a half and I've just plunged it into ice cold water. So... Uh, Let's see if it does some good. I reckon it will. I reckon it will. I'll report back. Anyway, I'm not going to um, do any more video now until I get back unless anything uh, happens. I'll just get back to uh, base camp and uh, get some nose back going. Okay, heading back round towards the trig point now. No sign of anything uh, odd going on this evening. So uh, there we are. But the ancestors want to make themselves known. I'm all ears, I'm all ears. Thought you heard something then. <laughs> Not a voice, just like a metallic clang. Anyway, there we are, right. I have to say, I wasn't gonna check in again, but that uh, foot therapy thing seems to have done some good. And I've had another dose of uh, anti-inflammatories that should kick in soon. So I'll be looking to keep the paces per minute up on the way back now. Got a bit more of a sense of urgency about me at the moment. After a rather meandering and quite painful walk to the top. Go on, last shout, last orders. It's a lot darker than it looks on camera. Nothing heard. Maybe I have to come up when there's a full moon. Right, tonight's delicacy. Just, mm, that's still £2.48. Oh. Caught shepherd's pie. Due out yesterday. That'll do. Right, let's uh, put my glasses on. I'll try and read that microscopic writing and see how long I've got to put it on for. Okay, I'm back. Heater's on. Nice little heater. I've got my uh, little screen there with Google TV on it. It's a little 10 and a half and a half inch screen. And this stuff. 
I'm just going to eat it straight out there just for ease sake. It's been a pretty tough day actually with the pain and the walk. It's been absolutely, uh, well, I would say pissing down with rain. It's raining quite heavily on the way down. I don't mind that at all actually, but uh, I need to uh, make sure I put everything away properly so it's got a chance to dry out a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to tuck into this for good or for bad. We'll take it from there. Yeah, folks, right. I'm happy to report that uh, sticking my foot in a random ice cold tiny stream on the top of a hill in Mid Wells actually uh, seems to have uh, put my foot to rights, at least for now, which is absolutely great. Well, that's a totally random experiment. I do know of this sort of hot and cold treatment, and I've tried it myself with uh, limited success. But uh, yeah, I've been walked a couple of hours and then plunging my foot into that uh, little stream up there. Uh, it's almost instant relief. I'm still taking the anti-inflammatories every four hours, but uh, no painkillers. I'm not on any painkillers. To be honest, they say paracetamol does nothing for me at all. And I don't want to go on anything, uh, any sort of harder than that. And of course, ibuprofen is an anti-inflammatory. It's not a painkiller as such. So that's what I'm on. Nothing too serious. I don't want to go on long-term meds for this. Well, look, he's driving the sheep up over the top there. It's bloody amazing that is. They were all in here just now and he's rounded them up. Look at that, a great big line of them up there. Look at that, eh? This looks like a bit of a building on the side of it. No, it isn't. It's just the way the fence and trees are. Look at that great line of sheep up there. Yeah, that's bloody amazing that. Anyway, that's enough of that. There's another caravan coming by the side of the other little motorhome down there. They, people in the motorhomes seem all right. I need to get um, more used to uh, people in closer proximity. It's strange, I'm quite chatty, in fact, too chatty with people sometimes. And you can sort of see them in their faces, they want to get away from me. <laughs> but other times I, I'm sort of looking out through the crack in the, uh, in the blinds, hoping they'll go and then I can come out and it's certainly they're very strange. So we have a split personality, but there we are. Introvert in many ways, but somewhat extroverted in other ways. Very strange, but uh, there we are. I'm not going to go seek treatment for anything. I'm uh, just going to say, right, that's me, and that's the end of it. Right, so yeah, looking down on uh, Camp Berlingo there again. Caravan opposite, little um, motorhome next to that. And uh, there we go. If I do come here more peak season, I'll start looking towards the back end of that site. The... Um, set up with the off-grid type things working pretty well so i do need to plug in my heated throw at the moment or i need to get my um heavyweight sleeping bag out i could do it off grid but uh i don't need to at the moment but uh as circumstances dictate that i need to go to places that don't have an electric cook-up i can do it i can do it i can do it right i'm going to uh plod on up and uh see what happens i intend to be up here for a good few hours and uh, see what happens. So uh, yeah, that line of sheep is still going up there. It's thousands of them, thousands. Anyway, let's crack on. Righto, there's all those sheep over there. The skill involved in that was uh, pretty amazing. Sheep dog and bloke on the uh, quad uh, quad bike thingy. Very impressive. There's one sheep still down in the field. So the got away or he's been left down there or she's been left down there on purpose I do not know but you can see on on his face he did look very lonely so where did everybody go you can see on his face where did everybody go anyway they're all up there anyway there's the lookout over there there's some of that uh, valley there and you can still see Camp Berlingo down there quite a climb actually quite a climb I do find it still a little bit of a struggle on the really steep stuff but um, really, uh, only like ultra fit people and people with no body sort of fat, no weight to them. They're really good on the really steep stuff. I'm a plodder. I'll get there in the end and I'll keep going. I'll keep going and going. And when I stop, I, I don't feel the cold. And uh, I've always got a little bit of pace left in me at the end as well. And I do notice that uh, on the odd occasion when I do sort of uh, chat with somebody on these hills, because over the autumn and winter there's usually nobody about, uh, especially down the Jurassic Coast. 
uh, as I'm talking to people, you can see they're starting to go into a sort of entry level state of hypothermia and I'm just stood there normal. So I'm happy to have a bit of body fat over me. So I'm happy, if I get down to 85 kilos, about 13 hours to down, that'll do me. According to the crap they put on, uh, on the internet, I should be about 10 stone, which is absolute crap. I got ill about 15 years ago, I went down to, uh, I think 65 kilos. I lost two and a half stone because I was ill. And um, I was Mr. Puniverse, that's not my body type at all. So uh, I'm happy, get down about 85. So I got about five, six, seven kilos to lose, half a stone or so. And I'm gonna try and maintain my weight at that. Anyway, some sort of amazing bird went flying around underneath there then. I don't know what it was. Don't really know anything about birds. The feathered variety. But uh, yeah, lovely looking thing. Great big wingspan on it. I don't know. Let's just say it was a castroid if it wasn't. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm going to carry on plodding up the side of here and round the side of there today. It's not windy, so there's no chance. Hopefully, you're getting blown off the side. And I'll circle round and round and round and round and round and round. I'll keep, well, he's locked those sheep in the field now, I think, so I didn't want to follow him up because all the sheep would scatter and all his hard work would be undone. So I've come in the opposite direction. I was coming up here anyway. Anyway, that's enough gas bagging. I'm going to uh, get on up to the top of here and enjoy quite a nice day on the top of these hills, Midwells. Okay folks, I'm up to my favourite place. I actually saw some people walking around just now. Amazing. They were um, scooting around the side there. I don't know if they're walking down into a little town there somewhere. I don't know. But uh, wow, I've seen one other bloke out on the sort of plateau before. One other farmer and these people. That's all I've seen in about five or six times that I've uh, visited this place. Seen a few people on the initial sort of incline. But uh, wow, unusual to see anybody. Anyway, so be it. Um, yeah, so I've been wandering around nicely. That um, was just cloud, that was just low cloud. Wasn't particularly uh, a little bit damp in there, but nothing to uh, write home about. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna wander around up here now for a bit. Get over to that other burial mound over there and then across to the third one. And uh, pretty much make a plan for tomorrow. Got a microwavable um, pre-prepared curry, I prepared pre-prepared it I should say it's one of my own that we put in the freezer so I've got that and some uh, microwave or pilau rice so I'm really hitting the microwave this time and I do have a slow cook job for tomorrow but um, not tonight let's get back and uh, get things sorted out and get cozy anyway lovely view across there to that little town there I think that is Booth Wells with the River Y so uh, just love it up here really it's the only time I ever feel relaxed is when I'm in the middle of bloody nowhere on my own. <laughs> Strange, but there we are. Okay, that's enough of um, gas bagging. Let's get over there. Right, so some horses over there, and they're sort of looking at me at times to say, do one. So I'm going to skirt around there, sort of around the back of the burial mounds at the moment, or at least the third one. I came around here to see if there was any sort of defined route perhaps to pick up that track over there and get onto that ridge. That'll be a monster walk, look at that, crikey. Monster, but uh, you never know. I hope that's not thunder. I don't like thunder and lightning. It's an aircraft. Anyway, I'm gonna scoot up over there. Uh, I've sort of been meandering up here today. So uh, on the way back, I'm gonna try and get the paces per minute up. So uh, probably not too much to report now. I'm just gonna get back, do me curry. Uh, do a few bits and pieces and out again tomorrow right i've done another trip up to the trig point it may seem a little bit same same but uh, now i've shaken off the gout i wanted to do a, a timed run previously i made it up here in one hour and seven minutes over a specific route that i use there are quicker routes but a specific route i use from the campsite and i'm pleased to say that i've come in under an hour so i've knocked over seven minutes off my best time that's just uh, a reasonable slightly higher paced walk than I would uh, normally do. Uh, so uh, quite pleased with that. So yeah, I came up here to do that and I was sort of um, spoiled in my attempt somewhat with the uh, dose of uh, foot pain 
but thankfully uh, I managed to shift that in time and uh, managed to get the uh, paces per minute up today. So I was getting a little bit heavy legged, I think a little bit muscle bound even after doing all the really uh, tough uh, up and downs on the uh, Jurassic Coast down there in Dorset. So it's a fine dividing line really uh, between uh, being the ideal shape for this type of stuff or not as the case may be. So uh, I was getting a little bit um, slow in the legs but I'm pleased to say I seem to reverse that uh, issue and I'm back to uh, onwards and upwards hopefully. So uh, I'm never going to be a high speed walker, I'm going to be a plodder but uh, it would be nice to uh, plod at least with some uh, pace and some intent rather than meander. Okay folks, right, I'm back. There's worse things to come back to. Slow cooked uh, pork and vegetable stewy type thing. Now all that is is uh, sliced up carrot, some leftover pork I had in the freezer at home. Brought that with me and I just chucked uh, a tin of uh, chunky vegetable soup in it and left that to uh, cook while I've been up on the hills for uh, five hours. That's probably too long actually but uh, I'm sure that'll make it all nice and soft and lovely. Anyway, there was a chap on a, one of these van life, stealthy, campy type uh, videos that he had a go at this uh, slow cooking thing, but unfortunately he didn't research it first. And uh, I think he expected it all to be done in about two hours and he kept lifting the lid up on the thing. If you lift the lid up on the thing, every time you lift the lid, it costs you about 20 minutes, half hour of cooking time. So leave it alone. Once it's in there, leave it alone. Any of us in our story, I'll do something on this type of cooking thing in another video. This one's all been about the walking. Anyway, so uh, I don't know how much more video I'll do because it's check out tomorrow. But uh, in there I've got half a bottle of white left. I've had the fridge on all day, the cool box on all day. So that should be just right. So I'm going to crack into uh, this and um, yeah, see how it goes. Okay, that's that served up. Unfortunately, I had a bread roll left and it's uh, got soaked in something in the uh, cool box. So... Um, that's ruined that roll and they haven't got any in the shop that they're not frozen solid. So I'll have to do without. Still never mind. Right, it doesn't look all that great underneath the flash of the uh, camera, but let's try a little bit of pork. Hmm. It's amazing how nice that is. It's just left over from a joint of pork we bought a couple of weeks ago. Mmm. Mmm. Lovely. Anyway, I'm going to enjoy that with some wine. And I'm going to call it a night. 